D&D rules are incredibly important to get right. And we're getting new rules in the 2024 Player's Handbook. And we know some of them. Some of these new rules are pretty good. Others, well, they still need improvements. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to go back to Player's Handbook 8 and see how we can improve some of them. A good example is rest casting. Welcome to Pack Tactics, where we like to read rules. Let's start off with a funny one right off the bat. I've I've mentioned this one a few times now. Somehow, this has never been corrected. I even put it in the feedback and it still hasn't been corrected. Right now, the difficult terrain says, A space is difficult terrain for a creature if the space contains any of the following. Look at the one that says ice. It, it's just ice. You know what that means? The ice cube gnomes are going to be carrying around or conjuring ice cubes and putting one of them down in all the spaces to slow down enemies. It's gonna look something like this. And these are tiny ice cubes. I think the current wording could be changed to reflect what is meant. Something like icy surface instead of ice. Next, and this is a big one that bothers me. The invisible condition. This one is really problematic at the moment. It says, while invisible, you experience the following effects. Concealed, you aren't affected by any effect that requires its target to be seen. Surprise, if you're invisible when you roll initiative, you have advantage on the roll. Attacks affected. Attack rolls against you have disadvantage, and your attack rolls have advantage. If a creature can somehow see you, as with magic or blind sight, you don't gain this benefit against that creature. The first problem here is, if a creature can somehow see you, as with magic or blind sight, you don't gain this benefit against that creature. This is only part of the attacks affected section, not the concealed section. This means that invisible creatures Creatures are just immune to effects, like spells that require sight. Even against creatures with blind sight or true sight. The second problem, though it's not really that big of a deal, is that surprise's advantage on initiative also works when you roll initiative against creatures that can see you. It would be a bit debatable about what would be best in a scenario where someone can see you and others can't. But I think the easiest would be change it so that if an enemy can see you, you you don't gain advantage. I think the wording should be similar to this. While invisible, you experience the following effects. Surprise, if you're invisible when you roll initiative and no enemies can see you, you have advantage on the roll. You additionally gain these benefits if the relevant creature cannot see you somehow, like through magic or blind sight. Concealed, you aren't affected by any of their effects that require its target to be seen. Attacks affected, attack rolls against you have disadvantage and your attack rolls have advantage. Now we need to look at Tremor Sense. A creature with Tremor Sense can pinpoint the location of creatures and moving objects within a specific range. Provided that the creature with Tremor Sense and anything it's detecting are both in contact with the surface, such as the ground, a wall, a ceiling, or the same liquid. Tremor Sense can't detect creatures or objects in the air, and Tremor Sense doesn't count as a form of sight. So, raw, I believe this works to bypass the hidden action. But this doesn't stop the benefits from being unseen through the invisible condition. I think the wording could be made clearer, something like this. The first sentence I just continued and wrote, even when a creature has taken the hidden action. In the second sentence, I added, for example, it does not negate the effects of the invisible condition that requires a creature to be seen. Now for more secret rule mentioned in the new barbarian subclass, Path of the World Tree. Any creature can voluntarily fail any saving throw. While this works with things like the telekinetic feat and the feature of that subclass, I think in general this is a bad move. Think of something like planar binding, that's the obvious one. You could just force somebody to fail the saving throws. But I do think any spell, feat, or effect where it makes sense that you can voluntarily fail should say so specifically. I don't think this should be a general rule. We can exploit this easily. 
By the way, this video is sponsored by Monsters of Drakenheim. The Dungeon Dudes are back with Scary Eldritch Monsters. The book is over 300 pages of D&D 5e content that will make you lose your mind. There's over 1,500 monsters and they kill people! Yes, we love monsters that kill people. Violence is the best. They've got Eldritch Monstrosities, Mutated Beasts, and Undead. And these are spanning from CR 1 to 30. Each monster has deep and interesting lore you can take advantage of, Mr. DM, to make your stories more engaging. But it's not just a monster book, by the way. There's new mechanics, too. Deadly Condition will add more tactical interest to combat through new debuffs and elemental conditions. There's new crafting and harvesting mechanics for players. What's extra cool about this is you can build entire player-driven adventures with this. It's very advanced, perfect for murder hobos like me. With Dun Dungeons of Drakenheim available on D&D Beyond and Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim being fulfilled? This is a ton of content that will last you years, and it's very fun to see the Dungeon Dudes expand it even further. The Kickstarter isn't ready yet, but there is a VIP Discord you can join to get a free set of dice when you pledge. You also get access to exclusive behind-the-scenes content before the Kickstarter starts. I'm helping you optimize your pledge. Go join the Discord now. Wow, they make really good stuff. Back to the video. Finally, we're at the last one I want to talk about. The long rest rules. These rules are a very controversial topic in current D&D. And, well, the playtest too. Most of these have to do with how commas and lists work. If the rest is interrupted by a period of strenuous activity, at least one hour of walking, fighting, casting spells, or similar adventuring activity, the characters must begin the rest again to gain any benefit from it. Is supposed to be read as any spell being cast rather than a period of spells being cast. Whereas Jeremy Crawford doesn't think so, and the grammar their style guide mentions they use also doesn't think so. But that doesn't really matter anymore, they've changed it now. Now, something like casting a singular spell interrupts the long rest, but in a different way. You can actually resume the rest, it just takes one extra extra hour per interruption. From a quick glance, this seems fine. Rest casting still exists, but you need to rest for longer. But there are two problems here I have. One, from the current wording, if initiative is rolled, you need to immediately resume a long rest. And that's like, huh? That's not how that's supposed to work. You need to finish combat or whatever first. You can't just immediately rest. Second, there are no grace periods. If a barbarian is hit 20 times in an encounter during the night, the long rest would take more than a day. I mean, sure, you could just restart at that point, but I don't think the intent is that a multi-attack adds multiple hours to a rest. Are you kidding me? I think changing the wording to this could fix these issues. Interrupting the rest. A long rest is stopped by the following interruptions. Rolling initiative, casting a spell other than a cantrip outside of combat, taking any damage outside of combat, Combat, one hour of walking or other physical exertion. If the rest was at least one hour long before the interruption, you gain the benefits of a short rest. You can resume a long rest immediately after an interruption or finish the scenario involving initiative. If you do so, the rest requires one additional hour to finish per interruption. This way, a barbarian can be damaged multiple times and a caster can cast offensive spells that don't last long for the purpose of killing enemies. Some alternative solutions, instead of adding outside of combat, would be to make it only count as one interruption in a certain time period. But I think that makes things too complicated. But Kubold, what if I attack my friend so we can roll initiative and I can rest cast during that time? Well, I... I <laughs> I think at that point you are literally just being annoying. And the DM will probably spray water in your face. Kubold, I hate it when they have those bottles. I do too. That's why I prefer playing on VTTs. Anyways, we gotta get serious. Uh, if their goals of changing long rest rules is specifically to remove rest casting, they should also say something like, spells with durations less than 24 hours end when you finish a long rest. Even if the duration has has not expired. There are obviously better ways to write it, but uh, I couldn't think of anything right now. One more problem, this, th 
I don't have this problem, but I can see somebody else having this problem. A long rest requires eight hours of downtime. An interruption adds one hour to this. So if you just rest for, I don't know, 12 hours, you could cast four spells in the last minute currently and have a similar rest casting method as in 5e. Maybe the wording there could be changed to say, if you do so, the rest requires one additional hour to finish after each interruption. Otherwise, I'm quite happy happy with how they've made the new rules. It's a lot easier to understand, and well, to even explain now. I really hope they fix the things that I mentioned in this video. They probably won't, but we'll see. End of video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope I earned your subscription. And if you feel like I didn't earn it, then that's okay. Have a nice weekend everyone. Play lots of D&D. Bye bye!